Hello, I'm Dana Blickensberger with Art Talk, and today we are at the Dunedin Fine Arts Center with our host Reagan Cosper and our special guest Nathan Beard. Nathan, welcome. He is the preparator of installations. So before we get started, we want to do a quick little icebreaker. This is a tradition. And um, Nathan is also a professional artist, so he's in the space. So we have three primary colors. We have white, black, and blue. You both get one big brush, one small brush, and you have three minutes to paint a portrait of each other. All right. So I never win these things. Thank you, and you're going to look at her and paint her beautiful face. So I'm going to time it. Okay. So are you ready? Yes. No. <laughs> Start. I always do this. I start with the nose first, and I'm not really sure why. Oh, he can. He can his skills coming out. <sighs> Are you from this area, Nathan? Um, no, we moved here from Denver uh, about nine Colorado, years ago. Right? Yeah, my, my wife and I, yeah. So, I grew up near Buffalo, New York. Okay, I'm um, from New York. So, it's... When people ask me where I'm from, it's just easier to say Denver. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Of course. But, um... You guys are still doing good on time. Yeah, it's been, it's been a really cool place to, like, build a life, you know. We moved here to kind of, I wouldn't say start over, but, you know, start new. Like a new chapter. Mm hmm And... And did you go from Colorado straight to Dunedin, or did you move to another part of Florida? Well, so we live in St. Petersburg. Okay. And I drive here every day. Um, so... It's not... It's not so bad once you get used to it, the driving. Um, Isn't it so hard to talk while you're, like, trying yeah, to focus? Yeah, it's actually really impossible. <laughs> Don't worry, you have two more... A minute and a half left. I'm so focused on, on this hair. It's okay. So right now... Reagan's killing it with the beard. I can really <laughs> see the beard. You're really good good at that. I like that. And she's always just glasses. And ironically, all our people have Everybody's glasses. Everybody's had glasses, so it makes it so much easier for me. Uh, and Nathan's going a little abstract. He's, he's using your hair as inspiration. And the blue, I'm loving it so far. Conveniently, my hair is blue for you. All right, that does work out well. How much time is left? We have one minute. Oh gosh. Don't forget the ears. Oh man, I forgot <laughs> your ears and your eyebrows. <laughs> and the neck. I need blue. <laughs> the neck. Very literal, which is awesome. So relaxing, is it? Oh, that's cool. I love the side profile. Oh, you haven't had a side profile yet. Yay! I forget my ears. Dang it! <laughs> Don't forget my ears. Oh, I messed it up. It's like a weird green. 30 gray. seconds. <laughs> I don't know how to describe this. 20 seconds left. <sighs> Let's just add some white. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and... Uh, okay, okay <laughs> show, show your lovely work to the audience, please. Okay. That is amazing! Oh, the side God. profile! The side profile, the point! That one's my favorite. Nathan, look at your shoes! And that is so, like, proper and literal. It's what I do every time! I know! And I love how it's like, there's no neck and it's in the corner. <laughs> there's no neck and your ears are Discombobulated blue, gray, and black. <laughs> you have to display it now. display it with you. Nathan, wow. you, you win this round. Yeah, you really do. Like, I'm I not even mad. I love the brush stroke of the black on the shoulder blade because that like, really yeah. sets the composition. Mm -hmm. You're right. Let's we do. literally never get like a side view. You should do more three minute drawing. Yes. You <laughs> should do more, more figurative work. I don't, I don't do figurative. No, I know that's something interesting. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, let's get into crazy. like what you do do. So an art preparator or an exhibition installer. Mm-hmm. Um, so how would you describe what you do? So in a nutshell, what I do is um, install all the exhibits. Okay, so there's a lot more that goes into that than just hanging artwork. Okay, so right now um, we're moving into um, striking one of our exhibits and putting up our holiday show. So what we need to do next week is all the artists, all 148 artists that are in the current show are coming to pick up their works on Monday. It's going to be a really busy day of, um, you know, just making sure everybody's taking their thing. And then um, the next day we're receiving the work for the holiday show, and we've invited, I think, 25 or 30 regional artists. Oh, wow. So we've been reaching out to Sarasota and Tampa and North County and... Um, um, I don't think we have any national artists, but at any rate, we're receiving a lot of work next week. So the first phase is receiving the work, checking everyone in and all of that. And then um, is to fix all the walls. So we have to patch and paint all the walls. So 150 holes at least. Oh my God. But you know, they're all, so what, as a preparator over time, you learn that there are some things that require heavy duty equipment but most things don't. They require a small nail. Yeah. And so it's very easy to fix the holes and paint them. Yeah. Um, in a museum setting, it's quite different. Okay. Okay, so like in a museum setting, you notice that the walls are absolutely perfect every time you see them. And then the, the exact distance apart. Yeah. The, the, mm-hmm. the love eye levels. Yeah. It, yeah. It's so a science. After we, <laughs> after we um, fix the walls, we have to lay out all the work. Um, and because this is our holiday show, there's going to be a bunch of Christmas trees between things with ornaments and whatnot on them. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of elements going on. Uh, so we, and then we hang all the work, which um, interestingly is usually the easy part. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. It's because, like Dana said, there is a there's actually an equation that you can use to hang them all at the same level. Oh wow! And once you learn that, it's it's very easy to. You know, um, it does require being able to add and subtract fractions, or you can use a calculator. You can do that too. Yeah, I like that route better <laughs> than doing that way. So, so then, in a in another setting, um, so I've been working at the University of Tampa also as their preparator, um, and some of the exhibitions that we've had there uh, are requiring us to uncreate extremely large works um, and. Uh, having to do what's called condition reporting. And so you have to look at every piece of work with the magnifying glass, basically, and each little scratch and whatnot, record it so that it goes into a special sheet that travels with the piece so that the person who gets it next knows... Exactly what to do. Well, they know what condition it is when we received it and what condition it was when we left so that you know, no one is liable for yeah. it. You know, there's a scratch. So it's a little things that you don't think about. So how did you get thrown into this side? Not thrown in, but like, how did you venture into this specific side in the art world? So it starts way back in Denver in 2004. Um, after I graduated college, I moved furniture for a while, which actually has come in handy. Yeah, by like, the way, yeah. <laughs> learning. Yeah, <laughs> how to move big, heavy objects carefully. Well, it, Right. All the heavy yeah, bronze, painting. you know, stuff, marbles and stuff like that. How to move things carefully. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I moved to Denver, and um, I got the opportunity to be the lead installer at a, a really amazing gallery in in Denver, which at the time was the only gallery dedicated to street art. Oh, cool! So, and this was back in 2004 when I think <clears throat> not that street art wasn't a thing, but as a as a gallery commodity wasn't quite there where it is now it's just it's sort of ubiquitous right so um, it was really exciting to be part of that and to be part of the transition from 
one kind of art to this more street art aesthetic. And but I, um, it was an internship and interned for room and board in a studio in the basement of this place. You had to have been single at that point. Too. So, like, <laughs> I was single, yeah. but then my I don't know if your wife would have been like, "That's that's a great idea." Well, we started. Well. Actually, <laughs> oh no, it's coming. <laughs> the fun story. The fun we part. we started dating, yeah, and and um, she's like, "Where do you live?" Well, <laughs> well she she I'm an she moved into a part of Denver that at the time was sort of like, you know, there's some risky things going on in her apartment building, and so anyway, yeah. she ended up she did end up moving into you know my place, and the studio was very small, you know, I think 400 500 square feet. So. Oh my gosh. You know, and, and it was one of 12 studios. Wow. And it was mainly young men. And we had one bathroom. Oh, God. God bless her. So, you know, it was... She has courage. We, you know, yeah. as, a, as a... She must have loved you. <laughs> uh, it, there was always stuff going on there, too. Always. Yeah. You know, there's always a, an opening or a party or an event or we were... You're, like, in the midst of the arts. That's exciting. When true, you're younger yeah. and you're just, like... Yeah, trying to be, you know, going through life in that direction. That's fun. It was, it was pretty. Mine in Brooklyn or New York. Yes, yeah, it was, it was very bohemian. Yeah, you know, but it got old pretty quick. <laughs> I bet. And not because of the gallery. It was because of the the neighborhood that we were in. Right, right down the street was the, you know, the bar scene. And like every weekend, there'd just be like absolute nuttiness. Yeah. You know? and, and you know, we got kind of tired of that. So anyway, I ended up looking for another job or something to do and um was lucky enough to start working with an art consultant in denver an and art I, consultant mm-hmm. okay and i thought what a great opportunity to you know both educate and sell and make money and, and stuff so i worked with her for five years and i was her i was the company's installer in addition to being a consultant so it's kind of like you learned on the job oh yeah definitely yeah i didn't know yeah, you just threw, that's amazing. Well, like I said, you know, it's it's not rocket science. It's, you know, putting um, think hooks in the wall and hanging them. But, you know, there's, there is a, there is a precision to it that as you get into higher and higher institutions, um, they demand that precision, obviously. So it does take a long time to get those skills. And then, you know, you run into things where you have to hang things from the ceiling or... The unique insulation. Especially heavy objects, you know, that you can't just use a nail in the wall. Or the, I'm sure there's, as things trend, like salon style, that wasn't like when everything is all anywhere. And yeah. It's, you know, that things progress, that right. you learn different mm-hmm. ways to install things are unique. At, it's not always the same. Yeah. So that yeah. must be unique to, and exciting to bring into the installation part of it. Mm-hmm. So what would you say is the most challenging part of your job then? Like just doing different kinds of installations, like depending on what they are, or like the time management? Like, I think it's usually the most challenging thing is always time. Because, you know, we can hang anything. All right, we can, we can install anything, we can do anything. We can build walls, we can, you know, whatever it takes, we build pedestals. But it's always a thing of time, yeah. right? So, <clears throat> a mu- you know, like a chant the Museum of Art, for example, or a Museum of Fine Arts, you know, I think they give themselves maybe six to eight weeks or more to install a major show. That's a, right. That's, that's pretty, 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 pretty Solid. standard. Pretty standard at the museum level. At, at a at an art center or university level or a, a retail sales gallery, you have a couple days. You have. <laughs> A week, two weeks, yeah. three three weeks max. That's because for yeah. here, here for example, you know we change out all seven galleries at once. You know, so That's a lot. it's a lot yeah. of work. But we have so many people that come in, and oh, we came to see the art. Sorry, we're we're down. We're in between. <laughs> so, um, so we work as quickly as we can. But again, it's it's a balance between like getting this done and getting it done um, with care and precision. Um, and then, you know, we like to have some beauty and poetry in our work too, where, you know, there's there's the curatorial process is a com- completely other thing, you know, it's 
like you, what goes next to what is extremely important. In you know, it's, you don't we don't just hang stuff. You know, it's like this piece talks to this piece, and these two look across each other from the room, and or there's a certain kind of story that's being told through the work. And then sometimes we may have a guest curator that comes in, and mm-hmm. you know, you've got all these different perspectives. Right, and then one of the shows that we have now, um, Holly Wilson, uh, incredible show, uh, multimedia bronze and wax and a silver, and she installed her own show, and so our job on that was to um, give her whatever she needed or do whatever she needed to install her own show. So it's you know it's multifaceted and there's it's totally improvisational. You know, it's always different. So it's fun, but yeah, it can be... Yeah. (laughs) Kind of fun. So what is, like, the most interesting piece you've handled, then? Um, With care. With care, of course. With care, of course. Okay, so residentially, I'm going to split it up into... Categories. Yeah, so residentially, um, I worked with a family in Tierra Verde who had this really interesting map collection. So they travel the world, and everywhere they go, they get a map. Okay. And we're not talking street map. We're talking a map that they frame in nice gilded frames. So like the museum glass. They end up being like this, and they moved into this amazing home, obviously. And the maps go up the staircase. Oh, whoa. 30 feet in the air. Oh, that's wow. crazy. <laughs> and the staircase is shaped in an L. Oh, that's a challenge. So there's a special ladder, you know, and um, I was, it's it's a client of Articles Art Gallery in St. Petersburg, and so we had to get a special ladder that, like, extends on, on both ways, so you can, like, get on stairs and go up that high. Um, so that was challenging and fun and interesting. And they had fossils, too, what? that we had to hang on the wall. So that's like, again, uh, what kind of hardware are we going to use? Like, <laughs> same way, it's like 200 pounds. Yeah, so residentially, I think that was that was an amazing job. Um, in a, here, um, gosh, well, we have a really cool piece up now. It's, um, I think it's, there's about 20 15 or 20 different buffalo. They're made of um, plaster of Paris, and then some are made of um, fiberglass. Wow. But they all hang from the ceiling. That's got to be scary, then, to hang up. Well, if you have the right equipment, it's great, right? So we have a scissor lift, and it takes us all the way up into these rafters here. It's um, 25, 30 feet in the air. And so we just, you know, it's just a lot of up and down. And yeah. So if you're afraid of heights, this is not the job for no, you. No, definitely not. <laughs> Warning. Um, <laughs> Disclaimer. In a university setting, um, you know, like LPA. I said, we've been working at University of Tampa, and we've had a lot of really interesting things to do there. <clears throat> um, I think most notably it was probably the Tim Hawkinson show a couple of years ago. Oh, really? And we had to hang his um, gimbal basket which is this, I think, must be 10 feet by 6 or 7 feet basket made of um, not bamboo, but sort of like bamboo, very thick, thin. Thick, well, thinner, but... Yeah, it's about, tough. the rods are about this thick, and they're all woven into this kind of interesting shape. So, I mean, it's not heavy, right? But then there's a motor on it that you have to hang the motor and the motor spins this thing around this way and this way. Oh, wow. <laughs> so the thing is just like, like this, right? That is right? so cool. So, <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of different places to hang from the ceiling in that space, but where we, the curator, uh, Francesco Bacci, wanted it, we had to um, stretch cables across this, the, through the ceiling. And thankfully, the preparator that was there before us had put eye hooks into all the concrete beams. But anyway, we had to stretch um, cables across and then hang this on there. And then for the background, we had to stretch, I don't know, 30 feet of black fabric 
um, you know, 12 feet high. And so um, Jason Hackenworth, who's an artist in St. Petersburg, he does inflatable sculptures. He was so excited to be part of the part of the job because um, you know so many people love Tim's work and the chance to work with him and his work directly was yeah, just be there. Sign up, sign so thanks, up. thanks to Jason, we were able to brainstorm and figure out a way to hang this stuff um, because it's not just straight wall to ceiling there. There is a, a really kind of weird um, box in the back that drops below most of the ceiling and so we had to utilize that and anyway I won't get into the details wow. but that was super challenging you know and yeah. again because like okay we have we have two and a half weeks and this is only one piece that we had to do I find, it feels like stuff like that's that intricate you need a, an architect even involved with like yeah. well, something that's going to be that grand the artist what was great about that job was that Tim came Okay. To, to help us. The artists. So, you know, as preparators, we were like, you know, <clears throat> okay, let's be gentle, let's, you know, let's be careful, because that's our job, right? He came. He's more and he was too. hands on. Oh, no, you don't need to wrap the wire. Just like, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, it really freed up everyone <clears throat> psychologically to, to hang this work. And, I mean, one of his pieces, no one wanted to touch it. Like, no one. Yeah. <laughs> It was this little thing that looked like a dryer hose, a dryer vent hose. It was this big, uh, oh, okay. made out of eggshells. Oh, I wouldn't want to touch that either. <laughs> right? So all you do is you put a nail in the wall, and, and, and then set it. It just sets right on there. No, yeah, <clears throat> no, there's a special thing inside that the nail slips over, oh, okay, slips over the nail head. Right? I mean, eggshell is incredibly strong. Oh, my goodness. Right? Especially the way that he made it. <clears throat> but, you know, everyone's like... Do you have to wear gloves sometimes? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's my thing. So, seeing how you went through that, like, do you use this as inspiration in your own art to, like, prepare for these... Pre I can never say that word. Preparator? Preparator. Well, yeah, that, I, I, that word. I do. I do, <laughs> actually. So, the sh I just had a show at a university in Illinois called Victorian House Gallery, and I'd never been to the space. Um... I've gotten some elevation drawings and I kind of knew what I was getting to, but I really was trying to do something different with the space, you know, not just rectangles on the wall. I was trying to fit things in between doors or cut a piece and have um, the bottom third of it installed inside the fireplace That's cool. and the top two thirds. I think I saw photos of that. Mm -hmm. You were inside, like, with the fire. I, I saw yep. photos. And then another piece that had two pieces that were floating over over the window instead of on either side and so that required you know special cleats that I made so all of what I do as an installer and preparator helps me make things and know how to make things so that it makes it as easy as possible for their installers to, to yeah do, you know. thinking ahead <laughs> I like that a lot of planning yeah so can you find that like challenging though, like having to make an artwork around like what you need to prepare for to put it in like a gallery or museum setting? Like, could you do you find like restrictions because of that? No, because most times you don't have to think about that. Okay. You know, like <clears throat> so for the the Skyway shows a couple years ago, um, I was in the Tampa Museum. With some, that was amazing. That was a great show. I'm glad they're doing it again. I saw that. I saw your work in that. Again and again. Amazing job. So I the, the one piece I had in there, I had two pieces, in, and one was a rectangle, so that was, you know... <laughs> yeah, and then more simple. The other one was, like, I think 50 different pieces, and that one I they let me install myself because each piece had three three nails in it. Oh, yeah. And it required a template, and it required, you know... A layout. Doing all of this. But with that said, their walls are so huge and expansive that you don't really have to put, you know, a lot of thought into it other than making it easy for them to do. Um, but the Victorian House Gallery, when you're trying to do something that, that integrates with the architecture, you know, you have to measure things down to the 16th of an inch, and you have to think about, you know that an old Victorian home is not straight. 
it's probably yeah. <laughs> yeah. a little crooked, you know, so there's a little bit of that. You have to adjust it to your environment. Mm -hmm. I didn't think about that. Yeah, no. So, no one ever thinks about the foundation. Like, yeah. Your painting could be like this. <laughs> how do you feel about work when, you know, everyone says eye level? But, like, how do you feel about, like, when work is, like, like that you have to look up? I think that... Do you that, feel like that hinders the artwork? Um, do you mean, like, especially large works, or do you mean, like, a, a small work that's put up in a corner for... It may be a smaller or medium work, so you have, like, an eye level, and then they put a piece above it and maybe below it. Um, I don't know. It's so, it's so you see that a lot at fairs. Yeah. It depends so much on, on context. So, oh, okay, so, like, at a fair like Basel? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you have a limited amount of space. And so you got to do what you It's gotta like do. you have to decide whether, I think, as a an exhibitor or um, a, a gallery, you know, you have to think about how are we going to use this space, right? And so some, some people or galleries will choose to focus on two or three works, and they demand the space, and this is what we have to offer, right? Or we have the entire catalog over here. Mm -hmm. But these are entry works, right? These are our Lamborghinis. And then you have other folks who will pack their space as full as possible with this sort of and it's just like with this sort of thinking like if I put everything out, something will sell. It's like um, if you if you're taking pictures, right? You don't just take just one photograph, you take twenty. Yeah. And one of them's gonna work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so do you think the simplistic approach from your pers from your opinion, it may not be true, but it's your opinion of your experience is most effective, or like the many, like the, the I think, variety. I think a, a mixed, a sort of a mixed approach can work really well. Mm -hmm. I think that you can have, you know, for example, the wall behind us could be, you know, there could be a large painting, and then next to it could be a a, a nice grid or salon grouping of smaller works. And that those can work together, you know. So in in Basel, that that would, that would be super effective, you know. Yeah. That you have a bunch of small works, that, as long as everything's sort of connected. But Basel, you know, and fairs like that are are an interesting kind of jumble. They're a little bit <laughs> they're a little bit different, you know, because it like it, it's it, it's an exhibition, but it's not the same kind of exhibition, you know, because it's so focused on. Um, sell sales and promotion. It's, it's it's like well, not that galleries aren't, but it's hyper focused. Yeah, it's like showcase time. You know, it's like yeah, we're here for two weeks, right? Yes, yeah. that's we're, a good point. So, since there's like different like range of like museum galleries, art fairs, what would your advice be to other artists to like get more involved in how to prepare their works for a different kind of venues like that? Um, in terms of presentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, go back to when you started and you're like, okay, this is my first show, no experience. Like, what, what would, would you want to know? Like, Obviously, you have to do the simple stuff about the hooks on the back, but as far as tips you give, something that stands out to you. Oh, okay, so one thing that we always run into wherever I go is that the works are not prepared for hanging. Okay, there even, you go. Even though it clearly says in every single contract that you will ever sign, your work must be ready for hanging. I've been at fault for that too. <laughs> I'm guilty already. Not all the time, but I've done that too. Yeah, so. they, they, they leave a post it on the back, they're like, please put the hook and the, like, uh, like in the third. Of so the they account. expect you to come. Of like, course. To come like really prepared, including like your work. Like hangable. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So it's it's a. It's not their job. See, I didn't know that. Like, and a lot a, of artists, I think, don't. It's a sign of professionalism. So that's one. But it's also going back to what we talked to about time. So now I have to spend an extra five minutes putting D rings and wire or whatever we're we're doing. That's needed. On this, and and then you know, Walsh. Well, there's a very interesting question about some paintings that we had at UT. You know, and so we had to ask the artist, is it okay? For us to put D rings in your because there in were. your stretchers because you know it we are putting a hole in the structure you know so that there has to be some communication and, and thumbs up and you know and she was fine it was all good but because we're thinking about safety mm -hmm. yeah. right so I've run into a, 
a lot where um, there won't be anything on the back. And I know there's there's some um, uh, school of thought out there that says, well, you can just put two holes or t- two screws in a wall and hang it from the stretcher, right? Which, okay, yes, you can. <laughs> but uh, from our point of view, it'd be a lot nicer if there was D-rings on there because D-rings are the, are the most secure um, form of uh, hanging. Wire's okay. Um, I don't personally like wire because it flexes the yeah, structure. It balance. And then there's always, you know, we could put two, two uh, um, nails or uh, hangers in the wall to offset the, that kind of shifting, but um, D-rings are the best. And most people, I think they don't do that because they're thinking about how difficult it is. Yeah, because think about it. Most artists are a new artists just do the wire because they'll just go like this. Yeah. D-rings, you have to like measure from the wall to the wall. It has to be exactly the same because you can't, once it's in, it can't be slumped sideways. Right. So, yeah. got to be exactly, you have to measure, uh-huh. measure. And that's where the equation comes in or is it totally different? That, that's just it more about. does come in. Yeah, actually it does. Yeah, to the equation. So it's best to, when you're putting D-rings on, even wire, because you have to attach the wire to something, right? Mm-hmm. So the things that you attach the wire to, they should be the same distance from the top of the piece to the D-ring, so that when I'm doing my measurements and I'm using a level, you know, to, to put the right. holes in the wall, they're all the same, and sometimes they're not. And like, so we have to we have to adjust a quarter inch, lower this one a quarter inch, and then it's yeah, it's like all all in case. Yeah. yeah. So it's 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 a uh, I think, you know, again, we're, we're pretty flexible, you know, we, we work on the fly, it's no big, it's not a huge deal, but I think as a sign of professionalism, right. if you learn to do that, you know... You're it, ahead of the game a little. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And they like you better. Yes. <laughs> oh. They don't, they don't <laughs> like red that. flag you for that next show, they're like, oh, don't put that girl in No, no, it's just, you know, it's just about... It's just about being thoughtful in general, you know, about your own work and, and, and black the whole process. Of, yeah, of course. You know, so. So since you're a jack of all trades, you're an artist, you do curatorial stuff, you hang stuff, so what is just your general advice for artists to get more involved here in the Tampa Bay area? There's so much going on. Like, there's pretty much no excuse to, like, I mean... You have to go to things and, and meet people and, and you know, that's, it's, I think that's pretty common in business anyways and, the, you know, the networking. And I think there's that aspect of it. Do you, do you, don't mean to interrupt, do you find that harder with social media um, that people are not going out and networking at a young, I mean, a younger age because they're just doing it through social media? Hmm. No, I the, the the so I think St. Pete and Tampa is a really interesting place. It's probably like a lot. It's probably like New York, just like um, obviously much much smaller, and we have much much less mm-hmm. galleries or you know art we spaces. Have a good we have a good amount. It's a healthy ecosystem, right? It's a very yeah. healthy ecosystem, and um, you have so many different opportunities to exhibit or collaborate um, with other artists. Um, so, I mean, the first thing to do is just like to get out there and like, you know, socialize and put, most important for me, so I'll take a more personal approach, is like most important for me was like dropping expectations that I had about how my career would look and progress, right? So I'm not, I can't speak for everyone, but coming out of college, I was sort of like, okay, now I have to get a gallery and I have to do these certain steps and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it didn't work out like that at all. <laughs> <laughs> like, if, I, I went in the back door. <laughs> yeah, know, it never I, works out. As a consultant, you know, learning, learning the art business that way. And then finally, you know, through circumstance and life, and uh, sort of, you know, self introspection and, and all of that, coming to terms with art making and, and finally taking the leap. 
you know, and be like, you know what, I don't know what this is going to look like. I'm just going to go out there and try it. And, you know, so doors open and you, you walk through them and you bring positive attitude, right? And willingness and gratitude, you know, like, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, yeah. you know? And it's been really, it's been really fun to be part of the community because we moved here in 2010, which at the time was, I think it was sort of like before this sort of boom that we're having, yeah, or, was, you know, yeah. so. The boom was like 2000. 15, 16. Right, yeah. Oops. I remember I remember the first Shine Festival happening. Well, maybe not the first. The one the, that, the murals? Yeah, that was 2014. 14, and then... I just moved back from Brooklyn, and it was the first year. Yeah, and that's when things... Like, there was a bunch of stuff that closed down, right? And, like, um, so Mindy Solomon moved to Miami... And there's a, several galleries that, that shut down, yeah, and then the 600, the 600 block kind of shifted, and you know, so thankfully Chad Mays has opened his new space, and you know, folks like Jennifer Kashark are still thriving, and you know, um, but yeah, the, it was around the that Shine Festival is when, and then the, the Warehouse Arts District, the creation of the Arts Alliance in St. Petersburg. You know, so I'm talking strictly St. Petersburg, yeah, because that's my experience. Um, but that's the time I remember it really like, like coming. It was like separate, yeah. like the water, like it come draws back. Mm -hmm. come yeah, back. it was it was it was really quite amazing. And so, you know, being able to be a part of that and and you know build um, a life in this area in that um, time period. In this time period too, you know, and so things continue to open and unfold, and so you, you know you just have to be prepared. <laughs> wow, I love that. It's very inspirational, and like I think a lot of like artists get what's the word? Like they lose encouragement, like they lose like that no motivation that they have. Because, like, they look at their work and it's not going anywhere, so they just stop trying. So, and they, I, we get that a lot. Like, a lot of people say, keep trying, keep submitting your work. And, like, it's, it will <laughs> it will eventually work out. Yeah. So, I just want to, again, thank you for your time. This was, like, a very interesting talk. And I want to thank Dana for hosting. Thank you, Dana. And thank you again. We'll see you on the next episode. Bye. Thank you.